All right, Raquel, thanks so much for that. On that note, we're going to go straight and speak on this subject, which is very dear to Dr. Lois Ombajo, who's the uh, head of the Infectious Disease Unit at Kenyatta National Hospital, also senior lecturer at University of Nairobi. Dr. Lois, always good to see you. Thanks so much for your time. Real quick, let's get into it. This is a subject very close to your heart. Paint a picture for us of COVID-19 self-medication problem, if you will. Um, thank you so much, Jeff. It's great to see you as well. And thank you for having me on the show. So um, I think one of the things uh, that we've noted over this period when there's a lot of COVID cases, and as my colleagues have also just commented on um, Dr. Ngani and Daniel Were, we're seeing a lot of patients taking a lot of medications at home. So I'll give you an example. You'll find someone who at home is taking vitamin C, zinc, azithromycin, uh, some people even adding ivermectin, doxycycline, all manner of antibiotics and other drugs that are really not necessary and really do not change the outcome of COVID-19. So the danger of this is that one, you expose yourself to side effects of medicines that are not even helping you. But even more important for us as a society is that over time, these antibiotics that should target bacteria, not viruses like the virus that causes COVID-19, with time, bacteria in your body and in your environment begins to get resistant to commonly use antibiotics, which means in future, someone may come in with a pneumonia caused by a bacteria, and we are not able to treat it because those bacteria have become resistant to antibiotics. So in using too much antibiotics, we're actually harming ourselves and harming our future, our children and other generations, because they will not have antibiotics to use. So it's a very... It's a very disturbing situation right now because people are using drugs that are not indicated and not prescribed by doctors and are not useful. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point, Doc. You think people are panicking all of a sudden or they're doing too much uh, because they don't know about the dangers or they're just not aware? What do you think is the reason? So I think, one, there's a lot of panic and a lot of fear, understandably so. We've seen cases of severe COVID and people dying of COVID. So it's understandable that people will panic. At the same time, we've had, uh, I always say that for some reason, the wrong things seem to go viral. So whenever we have this uh, odd prescriptions that someone picks from somewhere, everybody starts to follow it. So you've seen on social media prescriptions that we're not sure where they came from, but they have so many things listed there that are not useful. So I think for most people, if you're not getting better, if you're developing symptoms, it's always best to check in with the hospital or clinic closest to you as opposed to going over the counter to buy for yourselves antibiotics. So one, yes, the fear is real, and it's understandable that people be afraid. But remember, even in the fear, let's not harm ourselves. Let's not cause ourselves more harm than good. It's really important that we only take what will help us, not what will harm us further. Absolutely, Doctor. At the same time, obviously, we, we see the dangers in the trend. Uh, do you think existing laws uh, on self-regulating uh, with antibiotics is being followed as it should? Um, absolutely not. So antibiotics are classified under a category of medicines that should only be sold with a prescription. Unfortunately, in this country, if you walk to a pharmacy or a chemist, you'll be given antibiotics. No people even go and say, give me two tablets of amoxicillin or give me five tablets of augmenting and they're able to get that. So clearly there has to be a lot more enforcement of the regulation around sale of antibiotics. So it's not just the people buying the antibiotics who are wrong. It's also those who are selling antibiotics over the counter without a prescription. And the Pharmacy and Poisons Board, I saw they released some statements today, but it has to be followed up by more strict measures so that we protect ourselves and we protect the future of antibiotics. And our one of the things we know, especially in the context of hospitals, when we use too much antibiotics, we have a lot of resistant bacteria within hospitals, which means with time, uh, if you're admitted into a hospital for, let's say you need surgery, you could very well get infected with a bacteria that's resistant to antibiotics. So we also end up making hospitals a dangerous place to be. So both in the community, let us reduce use of antibiotics, let us not buy antibiotics over the counter without a prescription, and for healthcare workers within hospitals, we really only have to prescribe antibiotics where they're necessary. 
Good points, doctor. Good points. Look, people isolating at home, what are they supposed to do since the Ministry of Health is no longer checking on them like it was doing before? Um, so one of the things that you have to realize is that when there's so many people who are sick, it's very difficult to keep track of everybody. So some things fall through the cracks. But if someone is at home, it really depends on what symptoms they have. As we've said many times before, most people are asymptomatic. They do not have any symptoms. If you do not have symptoms, you do not need to take any medication. Most people do well, do not develop symptoms, and recover without any issues. If you have mild symptoms, so someone may have a mild sore throat or a running nose, then um, that's a situation where you could take something to relieve the symptoms. So someone could, you know, gargle some salty water, for example, uh, take some honey that would re uh, relieve some of the sore throat. If you have congestion, then you may take some antihistamines. Remember, there are certain categories of people who may be at a little higher risk for developing certain complications. So people who are much older, or who have certain conditions like diabetes or heart disease, who it's always important that they check in with their doctors so that they have a review and that will tell them why it's, whether it's safe to isolate at home or whether they need to go into hospital. If so someone is at home, and sorry Jeff, let me just finish this yep, one. Yep. If someone is at home and they get worsening of symptoms, so if you had a cough and this cough is getting worse or you're getting chest pain, or you're having some difficulty in breathing, do not stay at home taking antibiotics. Present to a hospital because we want to know whether you have, you have enough oxygen in the blood, whether we need to give you oxygen, and whether there are other issues that we need to sort out. So if symptoms are worsening, don't stay home, go to hospital. Very good advice, Doc. Look, Dr. Lewis, can, can I ask you to hang on for a couple of minutes? We have a story just in about oxygen or lack thereof. Can, can, can I ask you to hold on just a couple of minutes? We'll get to okay.